most famous thing you did um, as Bad News Bad, it was a celebrity angle. Like, you used to watch the UK pay-per-views uh, in the late 90s, and they would have, like, you know, Eamon Holmes is in the front row. Back, back in my day as a fan in like 98, 99, when I was going to those shows, it was always Shane Ritchie. Every time I went to a show, Shane Ritchie front and center. He was the biggest star they could find. And, uh, so we're going to talk, we're going to talk about your celebrity angle. Now, I know that Glasgow's a very vocal football crowd, but no matter what side you, you sit on, um, you ended up having a very big angle with Wayne Rooney. How do we feel about Wayne Rooney in this room? So, mainly, but... Let, let, me, let me get this right. We're in Glasgow, and they are not fans of England's greatest ever striker. Well, that's a bit of a shock. Well, uh, I'm not a big fan of him now either, but we'll get into that. <laughs> Shrek. Um, so what, how did it come about that you know Wayne Rooney uh, ends up being in Manchester when you guys are at Raw, and you end up doing an angle with him? How did that come about? <laughs> I think that's aimed at you, not me. Uh, uh, uh. So, in my lifetime, the, the best football team in England, whether you like it or not, has been Manchester United. They've won, exactly, they've won more than everyone, though. They've won so many leagues, and they've had the top stars. They have been the biggest team. Now, I'm a huge Preston North End fan. I was born in Preston. There we go. There's one fan in here. That's a rarity. No. Oh, all right. It, it was a sympathy cheer. You understand my plight as a, a fan of a shit team. Good, okay. So anyway, I'm a huge Preston North End fan. That's always going to be my team. I was born there, and um, I get it. We're a small team, and I get very excited if we ever draw in the FA Cup, one of the bigger teams, and I've seen them play against like Everton and Liverpool and Arsenal and stuff like that. It's a real treat. We always get whipped. We always get battered by them. But, you know, just to see your team as a small team playing against one of the big boys is always a real thrill. But a couple of years ago, throughout my entire life, we had never once played against Manchester United in any capacity, which randomly in the draw at the FA Cup, we were in like the quarterfinals or the or something like that. We had this huge run in the cup and we, we got drawn against Manchester United, which was awesome. So uh, amazing. I'm going to get to watch Preston North End play against Manchester United. And even better than that, it was going to happen on a Wednesday, which was my one day off from wrestling. And even better than that, Sky TV had picked it up to show on TV. It was their pick of the rounds games, which meant that NBC in America were also going to show it. So I'd actually get to sit in my house and watch p and &E in America playing against Manchester United. So I'm thrilled by this. I could not be more excited. But I'm also a realist because I know this is PNE. Let's be honest; they're going to get battered by Man United. Man United have got a team full of internationals. You know, one of their players per week is getting paid six times as much as our entire wage bill. We really don't have a chance. But you know, if we can keep it down to lose four nil, five nil, I'd have probably been happy. Game kicks off. Somehow, by a fucking miracle, Preston take the lead. We're winning one nil. Second half, Man United are attacking us, and they're attacking, of course they are. They end up equalizing. But now it's the 85th minute, and it looks like Preston are somehow going to pull off a miracle, draw with Manchester United, and we're going to get a replay over at Old Trafford, more money for Preston or them, which is a big deal when you're a club of that size. And I could not be more excited. I'm drinking the beers. I'm already celebrating. Wayne Rooney gets a ball passed through to him in the penalty area. He jumps up in the fucking air despite no one touching him, lands on his ass and starts screaming at the referee who points at the penalty spot. Rooney picks up the ball, proudly marches over, puts it down, sticks it in the back of the net, and Man United are through and Preston are out. Boo. Boo. Boo indeed. I, I am fucking furious. He's, he's a prick, you're right. So at this point, I do what all rational, mature human beings do. I pick up my fucking Twitter, and I tag Wayne Rooney in. How about that tweet? How about that cheat Wayne Rooney diving against Preston? He better hope I never catch up with him, or I'll knock him out with a bull hammer. Everyone's laughing about, oh, are you a hard dumb by? Yeah, he's a cheat, this, that, and the other. Now, I know from my own personal Twitter that sometimes when I'm on TV, if I'm wrestling, whatever... I get so many tweets that you can't possibly read them all because there's just they're coming in every two seconds. A new one, new one, new one. So you have a little look, you see a couple, and then you put it down again, you move on, do whatever you're doing. <laughs> so anyway, Wayne Rooney, I assume he's probably got 50 times more followers than me, as if he's ever going to fucking see this. About an hour later, I get a reply from Wayne Rooney. 
I'm a little surprised. It says, ha, 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 I will get Stone Cold Steve Austin to beat you up. <laughs> what the fuck? Did Wayne Rooney really reply with that? <laughs> so I think, holy shit. And now the, the Mirror or the Sun have picked up on this and they're tweeting about it. I'm like, whoa, that's, that's pretty crazy. So I think I've got to reply again. So I challenge him. I say, okay, how about you and Stone Cold Steve Austin against me and Kevin Davis, who was the Preston striker, at WrestleMania? <laughs> And I tagged in Vince McMahon, too, because I wanted him to make sure he saw this, because if this was ever going to happen, it was going to be a Vince McMahon sign-off. And at this point, Stone Cold Steve Austin gets involved in the conversation. <laughs> and he, he immediately starts mocking Wayne Rooney for having hair plugs and not shaving his head. <laughs> Embrace the baldness, and that's the bottom line. I think that was the, the exact tweet. But uh, at this point, this has gone insane. WWE are retweeting it. The Telegraph are on it. BBC are on it. Everyone's talking about it. People are doing photoshops of our heads on all these wrestlers' bodies with Rooney on Randy Orton's body and, you know, Kevin Davis on Cena's body and me and Stone Cold photoshopped in there as a big WrestleMania match. And let's be honest, in the back of my mind, I know, obviously... Wayne Rooney is never going to get in a fucking wrestling ring. He earns £300,000 a week. He's insured out the ears, and he's never going to be allowed to do this. So this is all fun and games, but it's never going to happen. And, and naturally, after the initial excitement, it all fizzled out, and I forget about it. So two months later, we come over to the UK, and we're on tour. And uh, one of the people from the, from the um, UK office for WWE in London, they messaged me and said, hey, we've just had a call from Wayne Rooney's agent. He really wants to come to watch Raw being taped in Manchester and bring his son along. Do you think that's a good idea? I was like, yeah, fucking hell, bring him along. This is going to be amazing. So they agree, they bring him along. And I clue Triple H in earlier at the day in Manchester and say, hey, Wayne Rooney's coming along, and I have to explain to him who Wayne Rooney is because they don't really want... They don't really watch much soccer in the US, but um, I explain, hey, he's kind of like the LeBron James in UK. He's this big A-list, you know, footballer, and and he gets it, and Triple H is smart about media and stuff, and he, he realizes there's an opportunity to get some publicity here. So later in the day, Wayne Rooney turns up. He comes in his limo about 10 minutes before the show starts, and um, Wayne has one request, and it turns out he was a massive fan of WWE during the Attitude Era, and he really, really wants to meet Triple H. So he's got his eight-year-old son with him. They get whisked off to Triple H's office, and they go in there, and they have a little meeting. He probably gets a picture with him. He's got Ryan Giggs with him. He's got uh, Darren Fletcher with him. He's brought a couple of the lads along. I don't know if they were supposed to be his heavies or his protection, but that's he didn't have any bodyguards with him. So anyway, at this point, um, they're in the office, and... Um, Someone sends for me, and I get sent to Triple H's office. I walk in, and this is the first time myself and Rooney have, have locked eyes since our little Twitter beef. And we were both laughing. We knew it was, oh, Joe, oh, great to see you. That was funny stuff on Twitter, this, that, and the other. And he just says hello. And he doesn't realize we're kind of setting him up at this point. So uh, Triple H man says, hey, we had this idea, way, and we saw the stuff online. We thought it was really good, really great publicity. Everyone seemed to enjoy it. Do you want to do something on the show today with Wade? We can have a little segment or something. And Wayne really didn't want to do anything. And I get it from his perspective. He's just wanting a night out with his kid. His kid's excited to watch some wrestling. And, and Wayne doesn't want to end up looking stupid. And, you know, anyone's around wrestlers, we're twice the size of other people. And let's be honest, if we wanted to, we could very easily go off script and make, make, other, make the other kind of people from other disciplines who come in. We could make them look stupid if we want. We could genuinely go and beat them up. He doesn't know how wrestling works, but... We're professionals, and we reassure him, nothing bad is going to happen. Don't worry, Wayne. It'd be cool. We'll make you look like a star. We're going to make you look awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. And Wayne's just not into it at all. So then we're kind of, you know, we're kind of giving up. But Wayne's eight-year-old son looks at him and goes, Dad, just do it. <laughs> and at this point, Wayne is trapped because he can't let his boy down. His boy thinks he's being a pussy for not doing it. And eventually, Wayne kind of shrugs her. Hi, right, okay, I'll do it then. So there we go. We, uh, we decided to put a little something together. We, we knew we were going to have to make him look good because we didn't want anyone cheering me and booing him because that would be a bad look. So we we're trying to figure out what we could do. And all we really figured out was we're going to get Wayne to slap Wade. But the problem was we're in Manchester where, Wade, where Wayne plays. Um, but he plays for Manchester United. So I'm guessing of the crowd, 
maybe 30% Manchester United fans, the rest are Man City fans or Liverpool fans or Everton fans or fans up from London or Birmingham or whatever who all hate Manchester United. So they're going to fucking hate Wayne Rooney. So 70% of the crowd are against him. So we needed to come up with an idea how to make 100% of this crowd cheer for Wayne Rooney, which is a tough proposition. So here's how we did it. When the cameras stopped rolling for the commercial break, the next match up was going to be Sheamus, who I was kind of shadowing at the time, and I was in his, his corner man or something like that. He was going to be up against Cesaro. Um, and they were going to have a little match, and um, at the end, we were going to have this spot with Wayne Rooney. But to make sure that everybody cheered Wayne and booed me, um, I had to cut a little promo to turn everyone against him. So we come down in the break because we didn't want to show me insulting Wayne on, on TV. Come down in the break, I get in the ring, I'm massaging Sheamus's traps, and then suddenly I go over, I call for the mic, and I tell everyone, hey, don't worry, guys, you're going to get to see Sheamus fighting very soon. But first of all, there's a little something I would like to get off my chest regarding Wayne Rooney, who was sat in the front row. So the cameras will go on Wayne Rooney. He's put on the big Tron at the, the top of the stage. I say, Wayne, we had a little beef not so long ago, and I really think we should settle this today. The whole crowd starts getting excited. They think they're going to see a little something special here. We can trick them like that. Of course, we're not going to beat up Wayne Rooney, but they're, they're starting to buy into it. And I say, you know what? I would love to settle this like men, one-on-one. -on -one. Now they're getting really excited. You know, I would do that but I would hate to have to embarrass you in front of your little boy. Now I look like a complete pussy. Everyone's starting to boo me because even though I'm talking a big game, I'm really backing out and people get it. I've just offered them something and I've taken it away from them and now I'm the bad guy. So people are booing me for being a pussy for not fighting Wayne. But the killer part of the promo was after I said I would hate to have to embarrass you in front of your little boy, I said, because let's face it, he gets to see that every single week when you step on a football pitch. <laughs> now, it's kind of a funny zinger, but people really didn't like it because I've just humiliated a man in front of his eight-year-old son who's apparently done nothing wrong. And that connected with the people that I'm now the bastard. We hate Wade. I was getting booed all the way through. So anyway, the match goes on. Eventually, Seamus gets thrown out of the ring onto the floor. I go over to get him. I pat him on the back, push him back in the ring. I go over and poke Wayne Rooney in the chest three times. And right on cue, he rears back, slaps me. I take the bomb. Seamus turns around. Cesaro hits his finish. One, two, three. Me and Seamus are the idiots for the night. We get out of there. Everyone's laughing. And the segment was a perfect success. And people got to see something special. They saw Wayne Rooney slapping Wade Barrett. And people loved it. And he was cheered out of there. So it was a... A really awesome segment. It achieved exactly what we wanted to achieve. And then I got to the back, usual handshakes. Everyone's thrilled with it. And I look at my Twitter, and this thing has immediately gone viral. And it's on ESPN in the US. It's on Sky Sports over here. And I have these alerts set up on my Twitter, which um, alert me as to what's going on in the Twitter world. And it'll even tell me when my handle, at Wade Barrett, which it was at the time, is trending. So I was trending in the UK because all these newspapers had picked up on it and they were getting clicks on the story and then I was trending in the US and then I was slowly as the sun was rising around the world and people would wake up and it would be on their news around the world it would be you are now trending in Australia you are now trending in Japan and the one that really I really knew we'd we'd hit a home run as they say in the US you are now trending in Nigeria This is the last ticket you need to buy. You don't need to hear anybody else sing. Once you've heard my voice, you've had the best. All downhill, don't waste your time. My words, oh.